you know, we've seen a lot of headlines about uh, the peril of social media, but it also has a tremendous amount of promise. And that's one of the themes of the book. So when Nepal experienced its greatest earthquake in 100 years, Europe donated $3 million to relief efforts, the US 10 million, and Facebook spun up a donate now button and raised 15.5 million people, uh, dollars more than Europe and the US combined from 770,000 individual people donating from 175 different countries. Uh, and that just shows the power of social media to mobilize um, the crowd for good. People like to make fun of the ice bucket challenge, but it's hard to laugh at raising a quarter of a billion dollars with a B in eight weeks for ALS research. Again, demonstrating sort of the power of social media to do good in society. Um, and it is essential to modern day social movements like the Black Lives Matter movement, like the uh, snow revolution in Russia. We've seen protests just recently um, that were, uh, you know, catalyzed and facilitated by social media. The leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement say that there would be no Black Lives Matter movement without social media. And before that, it was protest movements in Hong Kong and Ukraine and so on. I discuss both the power and the fragility of social movements that are based on social media uh, in the book. At MIT and at Stanford, we've done research that estimates that Facebook creates about $370 billion in consumer surplus every year in the United States alone. And that's just in the US. Imagine that worldwide because the US is just a small fraction of the Facebook network. And in some countries, Facebook is the internet. In the Philippines, Facebook is the internet. In parts of Africa, Facebook is the internet. And this economic value is created through job reskilling, through being able to run your small or medium sized business on Facebook, through access to life saving health information, meaningful human connection, uh, and many other things. Um, and so it does create a lot of economic and social opportunity uh, through the sharing of information, through collaboration, coordination, uh, and meaningful human connection. And really right now we stand at a crossroads uh, between privacy on one hand and insecurity on the other, between free speech and hate speech, truth and falsity, between democracy on one hand and authoritarianism on the other, between meaningful human connection or algorithms that threaten to pull us apart and polarize us politically and ideologically. And what we do in the next 18 to 24 months uh, is going to make a huge difference in which of these two realities uh, we realize. 